Today I'm teaching you how to make a raspberry mead at home. Let's get started. So there are a ton of ways to make a raspberry mead and I wanna teach you how I made mine specifically. This mead uses raspberry puree, but you can use fresh raspberries, flavorings, or really any other source that you can find for them. I just so happened to find this canned puree of raspberries and thought it would be really easy to use in this brew. We are also using raspberry honey in this mead, but you don't specifically have to use that. I would highly recommend a light honey for this recipe, something like a clover, orange blossom, light wildflower, etc. Anything like that would be great for the recipe. Here is the recipe card for this brew. Raspberries are naturally pretty tart, so I really recommend you lean into some sweetness for this mead for it to be successful. To start this, you're gonna wanna accumulate some equipment, so get yourself a brewing vessel, airlock, sanitizer, hydrometer, something to stir with, and anything else you might need. Sanitize all of your equipment and start by making a traditional mead. We're gonna mix together our honey, water, and yeast. We have the option of adding the raspberries at the beginning, but I opted not to do that. I did this because I wanted to add them when the fermentation was less vigorous. Primary fermentation often loses a lot of fruit aromatics and flavor when done in the primary. After we mixed our honey, water, and yeast, we took a gravity reading with our hydrometer. Our starting gravity for this brew was 1.100. Assuming this is finishing at 1.000 after fermentation's done, we're gonna have about a 13% mead. We then put a lid on our mead and let it start fermenting. I recommend adding your yeast nutrient at the 24 and 48 hour marks for this brew. You can use a nutrient calculator to figure out how much you need. I used Fermaid O in this circumstance, but if you don't have that, you can use a calculator to use whatever source you have for nutrition. So the first part of our fermentation will take about three weeks. We're gonna add a raspberry puree once we see the fermentation slow down. This will kickstart the fermentation again, but that's okay. You'll lose less of that fruit essence during this less vigorous fermentation. I'd leave your fruit in for about seven to 10 days and then take another gravity reading. Now, because we added our fruit, you will have changed some of the sugar content, making the total ABV of this brew a little bit higher. With me using a puree, I could more easily calculate this, but essentially I'm gonna say I added one more percent of ABV to this brew. After my fruit sat for a while, I went ahead and took another gravity reading. This gravity reading said we're at 1.000 gravity. This means that our brew is between 13 and 14% ABV if I'm calculating that. You're gonna rack it into a new container with an auto siphon and tubing and then stabilize or pasteurize it. So you'll want to halt any future fermentation with either method. The reason we want to halt fermentation is so we can use a fermentable sugar to back sweeten with. So make sure you either stabilize or pasteurize the brew at this point. Before I back sweeten it, I wanna add some oak character. I'm using American oak chips to get some nice oaky character for this brew. So we're using about a quarter ounce per gallon. And we're gonna let them set in for about two weeks. We then added three quarter pounds of honey into a bucket and racked the mead straight onto it. We had to stir it up so it was all mixed up, but our final gravity was about 1.020. The acid balance for me on this was really good, but if you need more acid, I would suggest to add citric or malic in a small amount. You should have a nice balance of oak, sweetness, and acid. I let mine sit for a couple weeks to hopefully clear and then racked it one more time. You can see it's pretty clear at this point. Here's a timeline of what your mead should look like roughly. Every situation is different, so this is just a guideline roughly for your timeline. So I bottled some of the mead, I kept a lot of it in the big carboy, and I sent it to a friend to help me with the tasting, so let's go to the tasting. All right, I wanna cut in and talk about a fruited version of this. This whole little explainer has been about a puree version, but I do have a fruited version right here. Let me walk you through the process for anyone who wants to make this. You're gonna get real raspberries, frozen, fresh, whatever you get. So we got that, got our raspberries. We went ahead and put them into a bucket or a vessel. We added pectic enzyme, which is something that helps break down fruit skins, gets more juice out of it and then you walk away for 24 hours. You let the pectic enzyme work because it breaks down those fruit skins and it helps get the juice out, essentially. Come back 24 hours later, mix together your honey, water, yeast, raspberries, in this case, of course, and I'm using the Lavin K1B116 because it's a clean fermenter. It does well with some fruity and tropical-y meads and things like that. So, I'm using that yeast, mix it all up with this, being a, a higher starting gravity around, I think it's 1080, 1090, um, we're gonna need to stagger our nutrition. So we're gonna wait 24 hours after mixing everything up and add our Fermade O. You can use other nutrient, of course. 
add your yeast nutrient over the course of multiple days or like me, just at the 24 hour mark if you wanna do it that way. Fermentation will take about two weeks. I'd recommend letting it set for about a week longer. Every once in a while during the fermentation process, open that thing up and kind of make sure the raspberries are submerged because the fruit can get mold on it if there's a bad bacteria in there. So keep them submerged so there's no risk of that happening. A little more time on the fruit itself will give some better color. It will also help it have more tannin because the fruit skins provide tannin. So that's what I did. I left them on for a few more days. After that, we racked it to a new container with an auto siphon and tubing. We stabilized it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite, or you can pasteurize, either way, halt fermentation. At that point, we went ahead and back sweetened it with some more honey. We brought it up to, I can't remember what our final gravity is, but it's on the screen. And we added some oak. I added some French oak chips, just kind of threw them on there, left them on for about five or six days. They were pretty quick to extract. Then uh, we went ahead and bottled this brew is pretty young. This brew is literally, I wanna say less than two months old. Not very clear, let me add to that. So I could have probably let it age longer to clear. It's gonna age longer in a bottle, but. Here's the timeline of everything I described with the real fruit version. It's kind of similar to the puree. I wanted to cut in and talk about this. The, the tasting you're about to see with my friend Bill was done without real fruit with the puree version. And you'll note, uh, will note in the tasting that it's missing some stuff. This version right here is so much better. I am, I, I love the flavor profile that comes from it. The, the puree version just didn't have enough raspberry, but no spoilers, here's my tasting with Bill. Back to the video. Uh, welcome, Bill Boyer to yet another tasting. We've, we just tasted a different mead and you're back again. You came back for round two. We have a, a raspberry mead here for you and um, I'm curious, have you, I'm sure you've done a raspberry meat in the past. I, I have, I actually have done some stuff with black raspberries. I think they have a great flavor to them. Um, I have a good cider that I use a black raspberry on. Um, but yeah, raspberry is a great fruit. It's a little tart, um, mm -hmm. goes with gut, with honey. So I'm looking forward to this. Have you used like a puree before? Like those cans of puree? Mm -hmm. Like an, oh, I think it's Oregon puree. I think yeah. I've seen, yeah, I've seen those. Um, I have used Amaretti's. Amaretti's unfortunately has a more fake flavor to it. Yeah. Um, I love Amaretti's for certain things. The for the, the that fruit was not one of my favorites um, yeah. for it. But yeah, the ones that are really hard to get. Like I, I mean, I have on my shelf a golden kiwi. Like I'm never gonna go get golden kiwis like around. So like yeah, I'm just gonna use that flavor. So. Well, I also find those things for like that tropical fruits from Amaretti's are pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's when you get to something that people really know. Mm, yeah. I think where you start missing it. They start sniffing it out. Well, this used a uh, raspberry puree from Oregon fruit, whatever it is. And uh, it w I didn't use a lot in in truth. Although I feel like purees might, it might have imparted more flavor than just the typical fruit. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, anyways, people, ooh, I'm throwing things. People are uh, aware of what happened in this brew, but I will quickly re-detail. Essentially, I had made a traditional mead with raspberry honey um, and added my raspberry puree to it and it re-fermented a little bit because it was in primary. Stabilized, back sweetened with more raspberry honey, aged on some American oak. This guy's like a little stronger than our last one we tasted. It's, it's in the realm of um, 13 yeah, percent. Thir yeah, 13, probably maybe 13 and a half, depending on how much fermentation occurred with the puree. So let's do it. Let's try it. All right. Give me your unfiltered feedback. And so the raspberry you said was only in the primary and that's it. Yeah. Nothing added um, later. But I love this honey. This honey is super, super fun. Uh, did I get it through? Oh, yeah, I got it through another AMMA deal. Beautiful clarity on that. Yeah, this thing cleared right up. It was it was awesome, and uh, I'm a big fan. I got to get myself some more raspberry honey. It's in my top top like two or three favorites at this point. What do you, you get? A list? little bit of the hint of raspberry in the aroma. Yeah. And what's the sweetness on this? You said one point zero one eight is the final, so it's gonna be semi. You can see the wheel spinning. <laughs> well, you know. That raspberry, as you said, it's just like the faintest that you get in there. Yeah. Um, I've never had raspberry honey, so I mean the honey profile's very nice on this. Yeah. 
it's definitely not like a I've had a, a punch of raspberry to the face before from from a mead. It's not that. It's definitely like I don't want to say Lacroix esque because I think it's a little stronger <laughs> than Lacroix, but it's uh, it's got a more mellow flavor coming from that. And it has. I mean, it, it is on that semi sweet, but then it goes that so it's really it has a very dry finish. It gets it's almost that medium dry kind of area. Yeah. Um, do you pick up any um, any oak character or anything on this? That's one thing as I've been trialing more oak. You know, I, I generally feel like I pull my oak off of a brew almost too early sometimes. And I mean, I, I feel like there's, you know, some, some tannins maybe and stuff, but I, I'm not sure if I would say that. I, if you told me there was oak in it, if you didn't tell me there was oak in it, I wouldn't even look for it. Right. I'd still have a hard time trying to detect it. In yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But I have a tendency sometimes to leave the oak chip, the oaks in there too long too. <laughs> yeah. So I think I've burned myself too many times doing that. I left it for so long, and then I'm like, Ugh. you know, I, I can always do more to add it later. So I end up being shy with my amount of oak I add. What toast oak was the oak? I'm pretty sure it's medium. Fairly certain it's medium. I normally use medium, but yeah, I have I've had some light toast before that I didn't quite like as much. So I think I, I generally buy medium for my French, and you know. American and all these other ones. It's definitely very drinkable. Um, you know, I, you know, when you talk about competitions, you're going to get dinged, of course, for yeah. where's my fruit. Um, right. But definitely it's an enjoyable drink. It's, it's, um, even at a high ABV, it really seems lighter than it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not, I mean, I still feel a little bit of burn from the alcohol, but it's not, it's not egregious. This thing is roughly four months old at this point. So at about 13% four months. It doesn't have a crazy burn. So I I agree. The raspberry is, st is light. And, you know, if I was probably doing this again, I would have, with, with loss of mead, I would have dumped in at least another can of that puree. If I was doing it the same way, obviously there's ways to do it where you're fermenting uh, in the bulk of the primary with real fruit and you're getting the that x that flavor this definitely does not scream to me fresh raspberries and part of it's because it's it's shy but, but also it just doesn't have the bright tart acid grip and but you you know you might notice i keep on smelling it so mm -hmm. to me it's just like this little thing of you know with everything else i, I kind of am like it's interesting aroma and it has like a complex um just it has a complex aroma with the the, the as i said the honey and the raspberry mm -hmm. none of them over dominating each other really on that so yeah. i wish i had sent you some of the i have a raspberry blossom traditional and it's fascinating the honey is fascinating it alone has some mellow flavors of raspberry which is just so crazy <laughs> to me um but it's super fun i should have sent you some of that as well it would have been good. Yeah, I've recently done some stuff with blueberry and honey. And again, same thing. You get some of that blueberry notes from the honey, which is amazing. I, yeah, I need to buy more. It's, it's hard to find good blueberry blossom honey and without, you know, chopping your leg off. <laughs> well, I, uh, I'm i curious. You know, again, this is another one I've submitted off. I, I might have already sent off to a comp. Um, so if I have results, here they are, you know, from from how it did. If not, then, then I didn't submit it to one. But... I really enjoy it. I think that the people at home are going to look at this and go, well, I don't have raspberry honey. That's that's a hard thing to get. So you could definitely make this mead with a light floral honey, orange blossom, clover, you know, maybe some light wildflower, something in that vein. And I'd recommend if you do the puree va uh, route to add twice as much as what I would I did so really lean into it for a five gallon which if I did yeah I did five gallons so twice as much at least if you do fresh raspberries how about this I'll put up some recipe cards of things I'd suggest if you would like to to attempt this mead I'll do them at one gallon ratios for anyone who's interested in doing it some different methods at which you can go and make this brew all right I want to cut in and tell you how I fixed this mead. So this raspberry mead, as Bill and I have been tasting and talking about is, okay, it's nothing to write home about, it's okay. I decided to blend this mead with the Coffee Blossom Boucher that I made, which he also tasted, and there's a video for that one. 
Um, I blended the two. I added more raspberries, some cacao nibs or chocolate, and ancho chili in hopes to try and get more of an interesting character to it and made that into its own mead. I'm not gonna share everything about that mead specifically here. That's the gist of what happened. But essentially, I, I wanted to take the mead and turn it up a notch, make it more interesting. So I blended those two meads. Both of them have videos. There's a Coffee Blossom Boucher video you can find. And there is a video tasting the raspberry, cacao, ancho chili blend with the Coffee Blossom side. So you can find that. But the mead itself's not bad. It just needed to be a little bit. So I just wanted to cut in and talk about that. If that video is available, it, available, it will be in the description. You can find it there. So back to what we were talking about. Bill, thank you for, for pausing your life and tasting some meads. You are uh, a, a big voice in my life because you are an incredible mead maker. I'm sitting next to tons of your bottles that I've been enjoying <laughs> of your ciders, of your meads, and it's been really fun to get to try somebody who's somebody's meads who's got it figured out. So thank you for sharing with me and thank you for spending some time here. Yeah, thank you very much. And again, thanks for sharing with, sharing with me. This is a, a neat experiment of these different honeys and things I haven't even tried before. Mm -hmm. So it's very educational for me. Well, I will, uh, I have no doubt. I can send you more experimental stuff in the future. I tend to do a lot of that. <laughs> so we'll share more in the future. Thanks, Bill. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.